welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I did not finish in 2021. So DNFs, hopefully we all do them. They're really good for you. In case you don't know, you should try it sometime. I love DNFing. Maybe love is a weird word to use. I have no problem with DNFing. I will do it willy-nilly all the time. I don't go a month ever without DNFing. And so I always film a video at the end of the year talking about all of the books that I did DNF in that previous year. Now one thing that's really interesting is this year I actually DNF'd a lot less than in 2020. I decided that if I was only like a chapter or two into a book and I really wasn't vibing with it, I was no longer going to count that as a DNF, but instead as a sampling of the book. And then I just chose not to continue on reading it anymore. In the year of 2021, I DNF'd 48 books. I did keep a statistic going of how far I got into the book, what month I DNF'd it, and if I finished it or what I would rate the book where I was at if I like gave it a rating because I no longer rate my DNFs. It's something I stopped doing last year. I guess some fun statistics for the very beginning would be which months I DNF'd the most in because I think that's kind of a fun little thing to know. So in January, I DNF'd five books. In February, I DNF'd four. March was three. April was four. May was eight. June was only one. July was only three. I'm kind of shocked by that because I know that July I was really struggling with reading in general. August was five, September was four, October was three, November was six, and December was two. Let's talk about why I DNF some of these books. The first one up is Dread Nation. So this one I is one of those books where it literally just wasn't for me. I just like wasn't vibing with it. It reminded me a lot of Ring Shout, which I also really didn't enjoy, except this one was a lot longer than Ring Shout was, so I ended up not continuing it. I was pretty convinced at the time of DNFing that if I had finished it, I would have rated it a two star, and I felt like it wasn't worth me finishing this book that has a lot of like wonderful representation just to like bash on it. So I decided to DNF it instead. I made it about 5% into the book. So not even really that far, but I felt from the very beginning that I just like wasn't meshing with the language or how it was written. Um, and I'm not usually a huge fan of zombies. There have been a few exceptions to that rule, of course, but generally speaking, I'm not out there like looking for zombie books. And then I didn't, I, there was just something about the writing style that like really didn't do it for me. Next up, these two books were both by the same author and it is Range of Ghosts and Stone in the Skull. I made it about the same amount through both of them, which was like five to 10% through. Um, I wanted to read a bunch of Elizabeth Bear's books and I bought those two and I tried them out and they both very quickly I realized were not for me. I didn't like the style of fantasy that they were because they're both like saga tales and I didn't like how matter of factly her writing was. It was just very like this happened and then this happened and then this happened. I definitely prefer a lot more flowery of writing and a lot more interest in the prose. I decided that both of them, if I had finished, I would have rated them a two star though. The next one was The Rage of Dragons and this is actually the second time I had tried that book and the second time I had DNF'd it, but I made it a lot farther in it this time. Um, I made it 10%. The time before I made it like three. Uh, I really, really loved the prologue. I felt like it fit that high epic fantasy vibe that I was going for, but as soon as the story actually started, it like went super young reading for me. Like it felt like I was reading a YA book and I just wasn't connecting with any of the characters, which to be fair, this book was not necessarily written for me and who I am to connect with it, but I just felt like I was dreading going back to the story. So I decided to DNF it. And I felt like if I had finished it, it would have been somewhere between a two and a three star. Next up, I DNF'd The Cerulean, which I made it about 10% into that one as well. Honestly, I don't remember much about this book. I think this is the one where there's the girl who's living up in the clouds and there's only women and each 
couple is actually like three people and so she's being raised by her three moms up in the clouds and she's chosen one day to be the sacrifice for her people it felt super predictable I felt like I already knew everywhere this book was going to go and it wasn't like having any intrigue in it that made me want to keep going and that month I read a lot of books um, this is still January and I read 19 books that month so I was like not in the mood to push through on something that I wasn't loving because also if you look at the month of January it's ridiculous I read 19 books only one of them that I finished did I hate the rest of them I thoroughly enjoyed so I just wasn't vibing and I decided to put it down uh, with that one once again I decided that I would probably rate it like a 2.5 if I had finished it because I think there would have been some merits to it that I enjoyed especially with the more dystopian vibes themes that it had next up i dnf'd legendborn and i actually made it a good chunk through this one i was about 20 percent through the book once i decided to dnf it i don't remember exactly what was happening in the story but i remember feeling like it was not pulling me in the story was kind of all over the place and i felt like i couldn't get a grasp of like what was going on and how the world worked in this magic system i really enjoyed this is super weird for me to say the parts of the story that were more like contemporary uh fiction stuff so like our main girl is in high school and she's going off to this college program and then she learns about like King Arthur basically is real right I liked the part about her like struggling and watching her parents struggle and I think you learn really quickly that her mother has died and she's like living with that grief um I really enjoyed that part and then once the magic was kind of introduced I got so lost and so confused and I really don't care about King Arthur legends um I generally don't care about legends at all okay before we move into February my back is starting to hurt so we're going to move us down a cinch so I can slouch next up i decided to dnf the book annihilation uh, i was really starting to get into weird horror at this time and so i felt like this one would be a really good one for me to pick up because it's super short and it's super duper weird i made it 30 percent into the book and it is letter format so it's kind of like dear diary today i went blah 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 and that is something that i just really hate is letter format books so uh after one chapter which was 30 percent of the book because it's a very short book i was like that's it i'm going to go and uh, not continue on with this one and i had decided that if i finished it i was going to rate it uh, a one or two star Next up is Hall of Smoke. I just got really bored with this one. It is like a Viking-esque story about this woman warrior. Uh, she, I had no problems with her. I really just got bored with this story. I decided um, about 30% into it that it really wasn't for me. I think I actually made it a little bit farther than 30% on that one, to be honest. I think I was closer to 50% when I did officially DNF. I think there was like a soft DNF at 30 and then I continued going and then at 50% I was like, I'm really, really hating this book. I put the audiobook up to like times three speed and whenever I do that, I know that there's no point. Like I'm not taking the words in enough for me to enjoy the book, so I might as well just quit reading it. And I was pretty convinced that I would rate this one a two star. Don't worry, I won't be rating all of these two stars. Next up was Lore. Um, Alexander Bracken is an author that I've really enjoyed in the past, so I decided to pick this one up, even though I don't like contemporary fantasy, and I don't like retellings, and I really don't seem to care about the Greeks. Not the people, the Greek myths, I should say. So this one, uh, even though everything about it seemed like it was something I wasn't going to enjoy, I decided to pick it up anyways. I genuinely think this book is bad. I genuinely disliked this book. I had decided that if I finished it, I would have rated it a one star. I buddy read it with a friend. I made it 55 to 60% through the book and the entire time I was dreading it and I was hating it. I had my friend finish it. She was enjoying it enough to finish it, but she didn't love it either. And I had her tell me how it ended and the ending made me so furious that I was like one star. This book is god awful. I just don't think there were any like twists or turns or mysteries. I felt like the characters dialogue was really poorly written and I genuinely felt like I didn't understand motives or actions and things just kind of happened. Next up was Fable. I didn't make it far enough into this book. I honestly should have counted this as a sample because I barely finished chapter one. Um, and I decided that I was going to rate this one a 1.5 if I had finished it. I just didn't vibe with it and I didn't understand why anyone else vibed with it. And to be fair, I only made it like one and a half chapters into it. Next, I started Queen of the Conquered. It's kind of in a similar situation as Dread Nation where I just wasn't jamming with it. I didn't want to just trash on a book that genuinely did good for representation in fantasy. So I quit about 5% into it and I had decided that if I had finished it, I would have rated it a one star. 
are. Nice idea and after the ones we're meant to find and unfortunately this one was an arc for me so you can go and read a review that I wrote about this one all on Goodreads but I made it 40% through this one and it was just weird and not in a good way. It's a dystopian book about these two sisters who are separated and one's kind of in this like utopian society and one's on this island with no memories. But the one in the utopian society is trying to find her sister and the one on the island is trying to get off the island to go back to her family but she doesn't remember anything so it was kind of weird how that all happened. This book made me think that I didn't actually like dystopian works because I love dystopia, don't get me wrong, but the way that this one was handled just really left me wanting more and I did actually skim to the end and then read the ending so technically by my definition I could say that I finished reading this because I read enough of the book that I could have a conversation about the book from beginning to end but I decided it wasn't worth it. Um, I, I didn't genuinely care about the book and if I had finished it I might have rated it a one to two star, probably a two star because the writing wasn't absolutely horrible. I just really did not jam with it. Next up was Little Fires Everywhere. I made it about 45 to 50% through this book. I did a good chunk of it and I actually really enjoyed the beginning of this book but once it kind of got into the story and we were having like some different POVs and some different storylines happening, I like grew less interested in the other stuff that was going on. I would have probably rated this one a three star if I had finished it. I just kind of grew bored with it and I was at the point where I was like why am I trying to finish this if I'm just bored with it. I did read this for a challenge video so I was like much more okay with DNFing it because it's not kind of something that's in my normal genre and so I didn't see the point of pushing through to the end of it. Next up was Night Film. I also did not read enough of this book to really be able to tell you anything about it. I just know that I did not like our main protagonist, our main character. He was a disgusting man and I didn't think I could put up with him for it's a really long book. I didn't think I could do it for the entirety of it. I read this for another reading challenge and uh, this one had like mixed media horror to it. So I think I would have rated this one like a 1.5 if I had finished. Next up is The Lost Queen and I actually made it 60% through this one. This story was told in like three kind of time chunks. So we had the story of this girl when she was very young. We had it when she was like a teenager and then we had it when she was an adult. Adult. It takes place all in Ireland. It takes place like back in the day. Like I don't even know exactly what timeline we're talking but like medieval at least and our main girl is like supposed to be this great woman coming into power. Um, I found that a lot of the story was her just kind of being pushed aside by her brother and father which would have been accurate but I didn't want that and that's not what I came there to read. And then when we jumped to the adult timeline, which would have been the last 30% of the book, it just felt like she was kind of stuck in this life that other people had chosen for her and she was stuck doing things that she didn't care about nor did she want to do and the magic had not been as big a part of the story as I wanted and I was just kind of dreading reading it. So I stopped reading it and I think I would have rated that one a three star if I had made it to the end. Next day DNF Monday's not coming. I actually tried that one twice as well. The first time I made it about 5% through and the second time I made it about 10% through or was it the first time was 10% and then the second time was 20% something like that. It was marked as a thriller and it felt more like a contemporary story about a girl whose best friend happens to go missing and then she has to deal with the grief of her best friend going missing. I think this one had a lot of good that it could do for the right kind of person who was reading it. I would definitely recommend it to um, anyone in high school specifically but I wasn't doing it for me so I put it down. I think if I had finished it I would have rated it a 2.5. Next I decided to DNF the book of Coley. This one literally came down to I didn't like the writing style and I think this is around the time when I started like no longer counting books as DNF if I only made it one chapter and instead I was starting to count them as sampling because this is another one that now looking back I would have put this as a sampled book not as a DNF book. Literally it boils down to I didn't like the writing style. I made it maybe 5% into the book and I would have possibly possibly rated it a 2 star. Next I DNF'd Air Awakens which I genuinely hated. I thought this book was garbage. Um, I don't understand. It has like gushing reviews online. The writing, the dialogue. Ugh, the main character was awful. She made me want to blow my brains out. Just honest to god couldn't understand. It was like bad fan fiction writing like it wasn't good and I understand that this was 
the author's first book that she had ever written, but I just could not get into it. I did make it 66% through this book, and then I had a friend kind of spoil the ending for me because I didn't want to continue. So it's another one of those where I might have considered the fact that I finished it, or I might, it's one of those where I would possibly consider that I had finished it, but I didn't and I didn't wasn't bothered. I would have rated this a one star. I genuinely hated this book. Next up is A Curse of Roses. I just felt like this one was really, really predictable and I wasn't in the mood for something super predictable at the time. I did like the author's note at the beginning of the book and the prologue, but then we got to the point where like I had met the witch and I saw like what the magic was going to be doing and I didn't care. I made it about 30% through this book and if I had finished it, I would have rated it a two or a 2.5. Next up is The Unbroken. I also got an arc for this and then I also ended up DNFing this one. I tried so hard and this is one that I might genuinely come back to at another time because I do kind of keep thinking about it as my life goes on uh, from me DNFing it and I still own it so I could return to it at any point. I made it about 30 to 40 percent through the book before I decided to DNF and it kind of came down to I was just really bored with the story and I wasn't like intrigued enough to keep going. It was very very slow so I think that if it hadn't been that slow I would have gotten more into it but I had heard from lots of people that if you got to the 50% mark the second half of the book picked up and it was so good which is why I like kind of want to try it again. So for that one I was leaning towards like a 2.5 or a 3 star. Next I have the Library of the Unwritten. I made it like one chapter into this book so clearly I'm not at the point where I thought I was where I stopped sampling or I started sampling books. I didn't like it was contemporary fantasy and I didn't know it was going to be that and it was way more focused on parts of the book that I didn't think it was gonna be focused on. Uh, basically what I'm trying to say is I thought it was gonna be much more about like the magic of like characters escaping hell but instead it was kind of more about the quest of these characters escaping from hell and trying to find them again. Um, but I like I said I made two percent into the book barely anything at all. Um, I actually didn't even write down a prediction for what I thought I was gonna rate this book because I felt like it wasn't fair for me to even attempt to do that. Next I made it 25 percent through Dance of Thieves. Uh, it's just super tropey, super YA, not really something that I was enjoying. This is another one that I might try and finish one day uh, if I'm like in the right mood, but we had the freaking trope of like the two enemies are tied together and they're like forced to live their lives tied together for a little bit of time. And that sounds really fun, but for whatever reason, the way she did it, I didn't like it. Uh, and I had decided that if I had finished it, I probably would have rated it a three star, but it just wasn't worth my time. Next up, I have Sweet and Bitter Magic. I only made it one chapter into this, and the general reason why I DNF'd this is I did not like the narrator. So I do want to come back to this one fully once I have the physical book and I can read that. I'm waiting for my library to get it uh, because I just, the narrator's voice like drove me insane. So I did predict that I would rate this one a four star because I really, really liked that first chapter, but I like wanted to claw my ears off my face. I did not like that narrator. Next up we have Red Sister. I made it 40% through this one and I think what kind of happened with this is I was really really enjoying my physical read of it. I got to the point where I needed to finish it for a video so I got the audiobook and I did not like the audiobook narrator but I had to finish it. I kept pushing. I needed to finish. I need to finish. I need to finish it. So I felt like I couldn't go back to the really slow physical reading that I was enjoying so I panicked and DNF'd it. I think I would like to go back and finish this one at some point. Uh, when I moved I did unhaul my physical copy of it but it was a mass market paperback and I was genuinely having a hard time reading that. I might try and pick this up from my library and try to finish it one day and I think if I had finished it I would have rated it like a 3.5 maybe a 4 star. Next up we have For the Wolf and I made it about 30% through this one as well. I genuinely thought it was tropey and I didn't like our like main love interest or our main girl storyline. I was super interested in the sister's storyline. So it's like the first daughter is for the throne, the second daughter is for the wolf. So the first daughter is going to be queen, the second daughter is sent off to be like a sacrifice to this wolf and it's like a little red riding retelling. A little red riding or is it big bad wolf it also had some like beauty and the beast like vibes to it but like not in a good way and oh, i'm still thinking about this book i get angry about the fact that i dnf'd it because if i had finished it i could have written a review about why i hated it so much which is just an awful thing to say but i genuinely hated this book possibly a one to two star i didn't have shadow of the gods because i wasn't vibing with it at the time i'm gonna go back to this one one day i have fully decided that i will be going back to this book one day i just it was not the book for that moment i had decided two percent in so i had read one chapter that 
I just didn't want it right then and I think uh, it was a library hold that I had so it probably had to be returned um, and I thought that I would probably rate it a 3.5 which is a decent rating. I DNF Skull Sworn which it kind of boiled down to I didn't like the change of writing style so all of Brian Stavely's previous books had been told in third person perspective and then this one had been told in first person perspective. I don't really dig first person perspective and I think it kind of sent me for a shock. Um, this is also in July when I was having a really hard time like reading anything and so I was just like put it down put it down if I'm not feeling it put it down. So I made it about 20% through that one. I thought that I would probably rate it a three star if I did finish it and I genuinely plan on going back and finishing it one day. Um, possibly this year, maybe not. Then I DNF'd Hold Back the Tide. I made it about 30% into this one as well and it was just slow and boring. It's kind of about this like lock Ness monster-esque creature, this girl who was like living with her father who's a murderer. I thought it was gonna be a lot more focused on her dad being the murderer and her trying to like escape him and it was a lot more about like, I don't know, like everyday life. Um, I guess I wanted it to be like super weird like as I crawl through it is kind of what I was expecting and it wasn't weird at all. It had no weirdness vibes to it and I didn't get any like horror vibes either. Maybe if I had continued I would have but I didn't, I wasn't enjoying myself so I put it down and I estimated that if I had finished it I would have possibly rated it a two to three star. Next I DNF'd the Star Touched Queen around the 20% mark. I think I would have rated this one maybe a 2.5. It was just way too convenient. Everything that happened in the book was way too convenient and I wasn't believing it and so I wasn't motivated to keep reading it. Next I had The Never Tilting World by Rin Chu Pekko. I made it 55% through this one and I was struggling to continue picking it up. I did have the physical book of it and I thought maybe if I had the audiobook but also I wasn't loving it so I was like I'm not gonna go and buy it because my library doesn't have the audio so I'm not gonna buy the audio myself if I already know I'm not loving it. The chapters were super duper long and I really only cared about one of the POVs. There were four POVs and so I was like having to read 150 pages just to get 50 pages of something I enjoyed. It didn't make sense for me to keep pushing through. So I think I might have rated that book maybe a two to three star when I finished it. Next up, this is a really weird one. So I did start the book Cinder and I DNF'd it. I made it like 5% through, wasn't feeling it, DNF'd it. But then I picked it up again and I tried it for a second time and I made it through and I finished it. So I don't even know if I should technically put this on the list. Plus I've already previously read Cinder. This was a reread and I DNF'd on my reread and then I ended up trying it again like a month later and was able to finish it and actually genuinely enjoyed the book. So I don't, think it deserves to be on this list but it's on the list so we're talking about it now I guess. I predicted that I would rate it a two star which I think I ended up rating it like a 2.5 or a three so I wasn't very far off on my prediction of that. It's super tropey. I, I don't know what else to say about this one. This is super weird. Next I DNF'd Little Heaven by Nick Cutter. I'm fully planning on going back to this book possibly this month. I don't fully know when but I think about this book a lot. I DNF'd 50% into it and it just wasn't like doing it for me. It is a horror book. Dick Cutter is the author of The Troop and The Deep and I gave both of those books five stars and so I guess I kind of went into this one with too high of expectations. It does have like a cult setting and so I thought I guess it was going to be like really weird um, but it focused a lot on bugs and I just like didn't vibe with the bugs but I feel like where I was at I hadn't been scared yet and I felt like I was really close to being scared. So. Um, this is a fact. I, I'm going back to this one one day. I predict I'll rate it somewhere between a two and three star. Next, I DNF'd Spinning Silver. The book took a weird turn and I didn't like where it went. It's as simple as that. Um, I made it about 50% through the book and I predicted I would have rated it a 2.5. Next, I DNF'd Six Crimson Cranes. I made it 30% through this and I predicted I would have rated it a two star. Um, this book officially put Elizabeth Lim on my list of authors that I will not be reading because it's just she's not for me and that's fine and I don't need to read every single book ever written. So the character's motivations were super non-existent and all of the actions taken in the story were super convenient. Our main character had no effect on the story at all. Like when everything was given to her or handed to her or done to her, she had no motivation, no action. If she was taken out of the story, the book would have been the exact same book. And I don't know how else to explain that. And I just got fed up with her. So I DNF'd. Next up is What Big Teeth. I wasn't jamming with it. I made it like a few chapters in, realized it wasn't for me, stopped reading it. I might have rated it a two star when I finished it. Next I made it 25% through Savage Lands and that book was just bad, genuinely bad. If I had finished it I would have rated it a one star. The writing was bad, the dialogue was god awful, the main character... <laughs> 
who wrote this book? There was this scene where the character was like in the hospital and like the doctor or the guard the hospital gown like lifted a little bit and he saw some of her thigh and he like was turned on by that. It was just bad. Next I DNF the maidens about 10% into it. I might have pushed through and tried to finish this one to see if it got better, except for everyone online seemed to hate this book. So I thought not for me. I probably would have rated it a one star. I DNF the man who invented the world at 50%, which this was a graphic novel and I would have rated this a one star. Genuinely bad, super duper obvious that it was written and illustrated by a man and in a bad way. Like that's not an insult to say that something feels like it was written by a man. It's just a fact. But this time it was an insult to the book and I genuinely mean that from the bottom of my heart. Next, I DNF'd within these wicked walls. I made about 40% through. It's a Jane Eyre retelling. It wasn't scary. It wasn't worth it. I didn't like it. I don't recommend this book. I probably would have rated it a two star at the end. Hey, here's one I can actually hold up because I haven't unhauled this one yet. But next I DNF'd Ascension. I hated this book. The dialogue was so god awful. I made it 35% through this book. I have a video where I read it. Goodreads reader recommends to be similar to, um, a Winter's Promise. The only reason I think why they were compared to each other is because they're both French translated books. This is bad. This is so bad. The writing, I, everything about this, bad. I didn't like how it shifted from like the main focus of the story of these people in space to like people on earth just kind of living their lives. Um, and I also didn't like the dialogue. As I said, the dialogue, gross. So I probably would have rated that a one star if I had managed to finish it. I didn't have small favors. I was like two, maybe 5% through the book. Uh, not vibing with it. Didn't like it. Um, this is another author that now I've read two of her books and really disliked both of them. So um, I can't think of what her name is. Erin A. Craig, I think. And she's another one now that I will not be reading any future books by her because they're clearly not for me. I would have rated this book a one star. It was so boring. I almost fell asleep while reading the first chapter. Next day, DNF for Rebecca. I made it like 10% through. Didn't like the writing style. Wasn't vibing with it. I know I don't like gothic stories now. At the time, I was still learning that. And so I think I might have given this one a two star. I DNF'd a touch of darkness at 30% through the book. Uh, genuinely poorly written. Like, bad fan fiction. Like, not good. Uh, made you question why this book was published. Um, I probably would have rated it a two star if I had finished it. Next, I DNF'd The Bone Shard Emperor. So I did read The Bone Shard Daughter last year. I got the arc of it and I thought it was okay. I guess I thought that the the things that were just okay about it were going to get like really good in the sequel and they didn't. It was exactly the same. If you liked book one, you're really gonna like book two and that's the best news I can tell you all day. So I realized I didn't want to put through another whole one of these books when and I genuinely like couldn't stand certain parts of it. I made it like maybe 5% through and I probably would have rated it like a 2.5 if I had finished it. Next up is My Heart is a Chainsaw. I made it like 5% through this one as well. Uh, I don't know anything about slasher films and the entire book is about slasher films. Uh, so there was no point in me continuing because I was so completely lost. Uh, if you like slashers, you probably like this one. I probably would have rated it a two star maybe if I understood anything at all by the time I got to the end. Next up was Skin of the Sea. I did do a video about this one really in depth kind of thoughts on it. Um, I just didn't like the writing very much. I made it 15% through and if I had finished, I probably would have rated it a two, maybe a 2.5. And then finally, the last one on the list is All of Us Villains. The only note I wrote on this book is the word bad. <laughs> so I made it about 35% through this book. I probably would have rated it a two star because the writing wasn't absolutely horrible, but the characters were awful. The tropes were bad. And it felt like the characters were supposed to be these cruel, like villainous people. And they weren't cruel or villainous. They were like redeemable qualities. And I just am sick and tired of feeling that way when I read a book. So I was like, I'm, I'm putting this one down. Editing Amanda here. Of course I had to forget one. I did enough to see of Ruin. There is a small, slight, slight, slight chance that I come back to this one, but I have actually already DNF'd it once and then decided to pick it back up and then cringed and then DNF'd it a second time all in this year. Uh, so I DNF'd this one because it was marketed as a dark romance and that was something that I, a dark fantasy romance, and it's something that I've had interest in reading more of since I read Guild because that is a dark fantasy romance and I really, really enjoyed that book. I didn't know how dark romance could get. I didn't understand that you could put certain things on a page 
And I was disgusted with some of the things that happened, rightfully so. I was supposed to be disgusted, but it got to the point where I was like, I, I am uncomfy reading this book and I'm not supposed to be uncomfy reading books. So I DNF'd it. If I had finished it, one to two star. That's the entire list, unless I forgot one. Let me know down below if you are someone who likes DNFing or if you feel like you need to finish every single book that you read. Really fun fact, my mom is someone who feels like she has to finish every single book that she ever reads. She will not DNF for the life of her. Um, I've watched her struggle through many, many books and I've told her about DNFing and she doesn't believe in it. So we got like opposite ends of the spectrum in this family. It is what it is to each their own. I'm having a good time. She's having a good time most of the time. Which one of us is really winning? I appreciate each and every one of you. I don't remember how my outro goes, but until next time, I'll talk to you in the comments. Bye. Mm -hmm.